Hey everybody, welcome back to another Xena 750 Super Duty update. Now it's been quite a while since I've made an update, so you're probably thinking this airplane's probably just about done and ready to fly, right? Not even close. In the whole month of June, I barely even touched this airplane because I was working a lot. I picked up two extra trips on my days off, um, and when I do that, I get paid 200% of my pay. That's the only reason I did it. But I worked a lot of days in June. I wasn't home a whole lot. And when I was home, I worked on my paint booth, which still is not done. But I did get a couple little things done on the airplane. So I'll show you all of that now. Well, just to give you an update on the paint booth, it is covered in plastic now. The only part that's, well, not the only part that's not done, but the back is not done here because I have a roll of this paint booth filter material, um, but I need to, it's two feet wide, so I, put, I need to put another two by four in the paint booth with some uh, chicken wire or screen behind it to where I can put that filter material. And on this end of the booth, this is the door right there, and I've got a little piece of plywood at the bottom with a hole, and I've got this, uh, explosion proof fan here that I will mount in that hole. I do still have to put up the lights, but everything else is done. All the plastic is up, so I just need to finish up the back end there and mount the fan and the booth will be ready to go. I do need to get that paint booth up and ready because the next step is to get this rudder painted. But I have the rudder in here now because the next thing I wanna work on is mounting this light on the back. This is an aero LED light, sun tail it's called. Um, when I turn my nav lights on, it comes on just a steady white. When I turn the strobes on, it'll flash with the strobes. But it goes on the back like this, somewhere on the rudder. But you'll notice there's a, uh, there's a piece here that will go into the rudder. So I need to cut out a little notch in a rudder so that when this is on here like this, this light can sit in there uh, like that. And then I gotta figure out how to run the wires through here. I'm gonna have to probably cut a hole in the spar to have it come out. And I'm not quite sure how to do that, so I was kinda thinking, I might just wait until September when I'm at the Zenith factory and see how they did this on their Super Duty because they do have this on the back of theirs. And I kind of want to see on the other end here where they have the wires coming out. So that's one of the things I'm going to work on next. Now, as far as the airplane goes, pretty much the only thing I've done is I finished putting on the checkers on that back part here. That's a separate piece from, from this front dorsal fin. Uh, so I have the checkers on there. So that is all complete now. Now on the back end here, if you follow along on the Kit Plane Enthusiast Facebook page, you probably saw the pictures already, but I have a fairing that goes on here, just like that. So there's what it looks like just kind of from the factory. And then this is the custom fairing that I made. It just kind of covers all this up and gives it a real nice look. You'll notice you can still see the yellow tab under here. So what I'm going to do is before I rivet this on, I'll, I'll mask this part off right here and just paint that green so that once the fairing is on, you won't see that, that yellow right there. It'll, it'll all be green. So it looks really nice with that fairing. The other fairing is not painted yet because I still have a lot of sanding to do with the, the uh, filler that's on there. But once I get the other one sanded, I can get it painted and both sides will be done. Now one of the other things I did too, which might be kind of hard to see, is I've got these pieces riveted on here. You can see they go all the way up between, they close off the gap there. So there's one on the left side and one on the right side. And the piece I'm talking about is this piece right here. This is just something I designed. It doesn't go behind here, it's just cut out to perfectly match this. There's two rivets up in here, and then it gets riveted there. And again, like I said, it just closes off the gap 
between here and prevents airflow and drag. So it's, it should be a little bit more efficient there. So those are done and painted and installed, which is nice. So the next thing I need to do to finish up the back end is paint the rudder. Oh, one other thing I can do too is since I have, let's see, I don't know if you can see, no, you won't be able to see it, but the elevator trim wire comes through here and it goes through a grommet in this piece here. And then it comes down through the top right here. And then I have the end here. And what I need to do is put the other connector on like this. This is the one that goes up in the fuselage to the switch. So these two get connected together. And here's something kind of funny too. You see how, if my camera would focus on this stupid thing, you see how right there, it looks like an electrical burn. When I saw that, I got kind of worried. I was, cause I had this hooked up before. I was like, oh my goodness, what happened there? And then when I looked at it closely, it's just green paint. <laughs> it's just overspray from when I painted the fuselage. So it scared me for a minute there. Anyway, again, once I get the rudder painted, I can put the rudder on and the entire back end will be finished up. A lot of you may have seen this already that I have the engine mounted on the airplane. I don't have the cotter pins and the bolts yet, just in case I do have to remove it for some reason I don't know about yet. I do have my remote oil filter mounted on the firewall. And I have this gold piece here that is, it's just screwed on to, I mean, it's just, it's bolted on, but it's not tight. The bolts are just finger tight right now. There are two blue 45 degree fittings that go in the bottom here that I have to install yet. And I'm not sure I can get to them and tighten them with this on the engine because there's really just no room back here. So I just haven't tightened these yet, just in case I have to take this off to put in those blue fittings. But once this is installed and the fittings are in, your craft specialty will make the hoses that go from here and they'll, they'll kind of run down and then they'll connect to uh, these fittings on the remote oil filter. I did order the alternator from BNC in the regulator and I'm kind of hoping that comes in today but it gets mounted right on this bracket here and uh, it does come with the belt, so it'll be a complete unit uh, once I receive it. So I'm hoping that comes in today, I can get that mounted and then the regulator would get mounted somewhere back on the firewall. Now the last thing I've done is I've mounted on both sides of the fuselage, the Dynon static ports. Here's what they look like on the inside. They're just glued to the skin with the same glue I used to glue in the top window. And this might be kind of hard to see, but you see this little T fitting right there. There's a hose going that splits off to both of the, the Dynon AHARS units. And then coming from that T off this way, I'll have another tube that goes to that static port, but I don't want to put that tube on until I know that glue is completely dry. Then I have this tube, let me zoom out a little bit. It's, it goes all the way over to this side here and it'll go around and it will connect to, you can see that static port glued right there. So again, once these, once I know the glue is dry on those, I'll cut that hose or tube and uh, hook that up. So that will finish that up. And then I don't think after that, I really need to get back there again. So I can hook up my elevator cables again and kind of finish up things on the inside here. Now, just in case it might give you some ideas or help you out a little bit, I thought I'd just show you some pictures here. The first one here is the static port on the outside of the airplane. And what I do like about gluing it in is it's completely weatherproof now. Here's what it looks like on the inside. And then you can see I have that T fitting with the hoses connected. And I just have a little plastic clamp screwed to the frame that holds that hose. There's three of those that go from the left side to the right side. Now, one of the other things I've done a little while ago is I mounted my two outside air temperature probes. There's one on the left side and one on the right side on the bottom. 
you know, there's a million different places you can mount these and people are always asking the best location to mount them. I don't have an answer for that. I'm hoping mine are far back enough to where the exhaust, the hot exhaust doesn't affect them. But you do want to keep them out of the sun according to the Dynon manual. So I mounted mine on the bottom and hopefully this will be a good spot. You know, I've noticed more and more comments on Facebook or YouTube and I think people are, let's use the word flamoxed at why it's taken me so long to build this airplane. And there's quite a few reasons why it's taking so long. The first, the, the number one reason is because I filmed the build. If you guys go back to, I forget what episode it is, but I'll, I'll put it on the screen. I talked about where I was fitting the inboard skin to the wing. And of course there's two wings, so you have to do two of them. The first one I did took about an hour to do. The second one I did, I filmed, and it literally took all day. You guys just have no idea how much time it takes to film, to move the camera around, to get the B-roll, to explain what I'm doing. It takes so much longer to, to film something than it does to just do it. So that adds a lot of time to the build. And the other thing is, Remember, I work as a pilot, so I'm gone half the month. Most people that work nine to five, they can still come home from work and maybe work an hour on the airplane. When I'm at work, I'm completely gone. Now, it does give me more time off at home. It gives me about, let's just say, 15 days a month to work on the plane. But it's not like I can spend 12 hours a day every single day in the hangar working on the airplane. You know, I go to the gym every day and I work out. I have to maintain my house which is pretty much falling apart because I've been ignoring a lot on the house because I've been working on the airplane. And then the other thing is, I've made a lot of custom fairings for this airplane. Guys, that takes a tremendous amount of time to do. I've made a windshield fairing just like I did on my cruiser. I made the two fairings for the back. I made uh, this fairing here that I'm actually not sure if I'm actually going to use. I made those metal pieces that go be behind the elevator. And I'm also getting ready to make two more fairings on uh, the, the leaning edge part of the wing. That takes a lot of time to do. The other time consuming thing that I did on this airplane was I installed an autopilot. Now nobody's ever installed an autopilot on a Super Duty and you know, the factory doesn't have you know, a, a factory way to do it. So I had to spend a lot of time designing my autopilot installation and figuring out where I'm going to put the servos, where, how I'm going to hook it up. All of that stuff adds a tremendous amount of time to the build. If you want to build an airplane fast, I'm telling you, don't modify anything. Just build it according to the plans and get it done. But for me, I actually like modifying things. I like doing my own designs on things. I like making the fairings and even my little storage compartments in the back bulkhead there. Things like that take time to design and build. Now, the other thing I wanna tell you is on my days off of why I can't work on the airplane all the time is I'm gonna show you a couple things here just for fun. Now, remember, I'm not saying my life is more difficult than anybody else's and I don't have more problems than anybody else, but it just shows you, it's like, I can't just come home from work all the time and do nothing other than work on the airplane. Let me show you some of the things I'm talking about. You know, about three years ago, I finished my basement and I added a real nice living area here. I have glass display cases with some of these die cast airplanes I collect. I built the squadron bar. I put a lot of work into the basement and there's a reason all this is on the floor and there's a big mess here. This is the joy that I get to experience when I come home from work. Look at all this stuff. There's a reason why all this is out. I came home from work one day to find my carpet was a swimming pool. Now this carpet looks like it's installed, but it's not. I had to rip out all of the padding on the floor. I've had to remove the closet doors because they soaked up water from the bottom. B 
because on the other side of this wall is a shower and this stupid little valve decided to spring a leak and water just ran down here, flooded this room, and then it didn't at all get the bathroom wet. Nothing was wet in there. But now, this bedroom, I think what happened is the water went behind the wall and completely flooded this bedroom. So this carpet was soaking wet too. The carpet's actually all dry now, but I've had to remove all of the padding because the padding just wouldn't dry. But again, closet doors ruined. And then if you look at the door frames down here, because the carpet was here and this just soaked up water, you can see how this now is all bowed and distorted. Um, all of the door frame or both bedroom door frames are like that on the bottom. So now I have to rip out these door frames buy new door frames and put those in both bedrooms. Again, all of these closet doors are ruined. You can see where the, the water stain is here. And you can see on these ones how the bottoms are all warped. So I have to replace all of the closet doors. So it's just a disaster. This is all time that I have to spend doing this that takes away from building the airplane. And by the way, this is my Blue Angels room because it's yellow and blue. And when it was, before it was flooded, I had my Blue Angels decor in there. And then this is the uh, Thunderbirds room. It was white with blue carpet. I planned on making a video sometime and showing my basement and uh, all of the model airplanes I collect. This is the bed from the bedroom. I have cases of airplanes here. I call my basement the museum. This is my museum down here. And I have my bookcase full of books. That whole top shelf, I've read those. And I haven't even read any of these yet because I buy these books faster than I can read them. But I just like buying them. So anyway, guys, this is part of what, the reason why my airplane's taking forever to build. I can't just spend 24 hours a day working on the airplane. I've got to take care of all this stuff too. All right, guys, here's another fun little thing here. When I moved in here, there was a tree right there and a bunch of just straggly bushes like these two right here. And what I did was starting from there, all around here, I dug out all of the bushes and it was just this nice rock. And then I was gonna try to get rid of the rock and I, I took about 15 buckets full of rocks away and it didn't even make a dent in the number of rocks here. But it didn't look too bad. And then remember I said I was gone for the month of June? <laughs> All of this grew in June. So now it's just completely full of weeds. It looks absolutely horrible. On this side of the house, I'm fighting with birds right now. That's why that ladder is there. I have all this straggly landscaping here. I have a tree that I want removed. So I've been kind of working on this a little bit. And now I got to the point where I just had a company come in that's gonna remove that tree and then trim a couple other ones. And I had another company come in, I'm still waiting for the quote. I'm gonna have all of this removed and I'm just gonna plant grass. And then all of this straggly, ugly crap over here is gonna be removed. All of the rocks will be removed. And then they're just gonna put in a nice, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a gray shale stone or something like that. And so I'll have no bushes or anything in here. It'll have the new, mat that goes down there that keeps all the weeds from growing. So it's just right now my house looks like a disaster and I've been working on this a little bit, but I'm at the point now where it's like, I'm done with it. I'm just gonna hire somebody to come and fix it. All right guys, that's all I have for you on this video. I hope you enjoyed the update on the airplane and a look at some of the disasters I have going on around my house. If anybody wants to come and help me replace doors and do landscaping, feel free to stop on over.